what does scoliosis actually mean? When patients are told they have scoliosis, they're very often confused about what does that word actually mean and what does the diagnosis actually affect. Scoliosis is actually derived from an ancient Greek word called scolios, meaning bent or crooked. This condition was first described by Hippocrates and Galen. These are Greek and Roman doctors of the ancient world. And when it comes to scoliosis, it's basically it's a definition or a diagnosis that is defined by an unnatural or a sideways curvature of the spine from the front that has a rotation associated with it. And the minimum measurement to be diagnosed as a scoliosis is a Cobb angle of 10 degrees or greater. Unfortunately, scoliosis does worsen over time because scoliosis is a structural condition that involves the, an abnormal twist or turn within the spine with curvature. And since this is structural within the spine itself, scoliosis is progressive. It's, it's in its nature because of gravity or growth that the curve will progress. And when the curve progresses, the curve or the Cobb angle will increase. And as the Cobb angle increases, the diagnosis category is also related to the severity of this Cobb angle. So mild curvatures are curves that are, that are between 10 degrees and 25 degrees. Moderate scoliosis is between 25 and 40 degrees. Severe scoliosis is anything 40 degrees or greater. And then I like to use a fourth category called very severe scoliosis that's 80 degrees or greater. These curves can be anywhere in the spine. They can be in the cervical spine, the thoracic spine, or the lumbar spine, or even combinations in both areas. So when we look at scoliosis, what are the main symptoms? Well, scoliosis in adolescent form presents itself very different than a scoliosis in the adult form. A scoliosis in, the, in, the, in the adolescent form, its most common diagnosis is something called AIS. AIS stands for Adolescent Idiopathic Scoliosis, and Adolescent Idiopathic Scoliosis means unknown cause. We don't know why the scoliosis is occurring. It just happens to occur or develop during juvenile years, progresses really, relatively slowly until they hit the adolescent stage. When they hit the adolescent stage, during growth, we see progression of the scoliosis. And it tends to, number one, finding or number one symptom tends to be a postural change in the overall symmetry of the body. Most commonly, it tends to be some rib arching differences or rib humping, but we can see uneven shoulders, uneven waist, uneven hips, you know, unbalanced gait. And when we see this body asymmetry, normally that will lead to an x-ray, which will diagnose the scoliosis wear and severity. And it go normally children or adolescents have no pain as a result of scoliosis. It's not common to feel pain, no matter what size the curve is. I've seen curves in children anywhere from very mild, 10 degrees, and the largest curve I've seen in a child, unfortunately, has been over 155 degrees. So curves can get very large in children, and they can progress very rapidly during this growth phase. The fastest progression I've ever seen in a child has been 20 degrees in less than in about six weeks. I've seen curves, unfortunately, without treatment, progress 60 degrees in six months. So during rapid growth is when these curves tend to progress. However, in the adult form, they progress very differently. Curves now progress as a result of gravity, and since curves are progressing because of gravity, uh, adults tend to, the number one symptom tends to be pain. The most common type of scoliosis in the adult form is going to be the adolescent case that gets untreated or undiagnosed, that gets diagnosed in the adult form as an idiopathic scoliosis in now the adult form that was undiagnosed or maybe diagnosed but untreated um, is now being diagnosed later on in life. And then later, secondarily, there's also something called degenerative scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is when the spine goes through some type of injury or shifting of the spine in the adult stage. It goes through a degenerative phase over time, and this degenerative phase leads to compression of the vertebra and discs, which can cause the spine to develop a scoliosis. Again, the main symptom is almost always pain in the adult stage. Scoliosis is almost always painful in the adult stage because the compression of gravity over time tends to lead to pain or pressure to the nerve system or muscles and tissues, which can lead to pain. Secondarily, we also see postural changes, very similar to what we see in the adolescent form, a postural lean, uneven shoulders, uneven hip, uneven waist, and rib arching. In both these cases, what are the treatment options? Well, there's two types of main approaches when it comes to treating scoliosis, something that I call traditional treatment option versus conservative treatment options. Traditional treatment options have a very 
a very specific way or very set in stone way of taking care of scoliosis. Um, mild curvatures, whether they're adult cases or adolescent cases, it's most commonly just watch and wait. And when they're watching, they're hoping the curve doesn't worsen. Um, if the curve worsens into the moderate stage, um, in an adolescent stage, they may recommend something called the Boston brace. It's trying to slow down the progression. In the adult stage, there again, there is nothing. It's recommended to watch and wait. If the adult case is having pain, they do pain treatment and pain management, but nothing for the curve itself. Once curves break severe category in the adolescent or adult stage, this is when you can consider surgery. And surgical is where they go in with surgical fusion of the spine to try to fuse the spine together. And, and the, even though fusion of the spine can actually do, can reduce the curve, it does it at an expense, and that is spinal flexibility and function. So the traditional options are pretty very limited until you get to the severe category where now they say you need full spinal fusion. In the conservative mindset, we are thinking very differently. We're thinking proactively, we're thinking non-surgically, and our goal is to try to prevent surgery. In the conservative mindset, surgery becomes an option when all other treatments fail. And the most effective form of conservative treatment is one that integrates multiple treatment disciplines to provide the very best results for a patient. So in a, a very effective conservative treatment option, we're not just doing exercises or we're not just doing therapy, we're not just doing chiropractic, we're just not doing bracing, we're using all those modalities and all those disciplines in a, in a, in a sequential manner that's all being done so every treatment works with the other to provide the very best results. And, a, and, a, and an effective treatment option in a conservative manner is one that actually affects the structure of the spine. Unfortunately, in, especially in adult cases, people consider that, hey, I'm doing conservative scoliosis treatment because they're doing pain management, meaning they have back pain or neck pain, or they're having headaches and they have scoliosis, and they're being treated from a professional that treats the symptom of the scoliosis, but the curve is still there and the curve is still progressing over time. So therefore, we always recommend an effective conservative treatment option must address the spine at a structural level. Now, there's one thing we definitely do know is that, like I said, is scoliosis is always progressive. It's either, it has a chance of progressing rapidly during the adolescent stage, but even if it doesn't, we know gravity over time will cause progression. And therefore, a progressive, since scoliosis is always progressive and smaller curves always respond better than larger curves, we always recommend treating curves early is much more effective than treating curves as they progress. So we recommend being proactive. So that since most patients, patients are never gonna be younger than they are right now, and their curve is never gonna be smaller than it is right now, we always recommend the sooner the better. And sometimes waiting before it becomes severe and before it, comes, before it becomes symptomatic, especially in the adult stage, may be a better approach than letting the curve continue to progress. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we actually do combine all those treatment options that I mentioned with very specific structural chiropractic care, with in office therapy, with prescribed home exercises, and corrective bracing if they're needed. And we've all done this in a very tailored way to provide the very best results for each and every scoliosis patient we see. Every patient is absolutely unique. They, own the, they need their completely unique, customized program, not just general types of therapies and exercises and rehab, because those are not very effective in actually reducing structurally a scoliosis, even though sometimes general therapy and exercises may help with pain. We want to make sure they're actually affecting the structure of the spine to provide the very best results and long-term outcomes. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.